So when I tried to run Hashcat against that uh, hash in a virtual machine using Windows, it did not work, unfortunately. So we are going to uh, boot up a Linux machine. You should have one that's an appliance that you can spin up pretty quickly. But go ahead and spin up a Linux machine. Keep your Windows machine on, and we're going to use Hashcat on Linux because we can get it to work. So pause the video, get yourself some Linux. First thing we're going to do is we're going to apt install Hashcat. Pause the video, get that to install. Uh, the next thing we're going to need to install are these packages here. And I'll try to remember to put them on there, but uh, it's apt-get install lib hwloc-dev, ocl-icd-dev, ocl-icd-opencl-dev. So you need to install those packages because Hashcat uses the GPU. And if you actually have this running on native hardware, you are going to get a much faster hash rate. However, we can use it on a virtual machine and use the CPU, and with a really simple password like we created for our user, uh, not bad. Yeah, so it, it'll, it'll get through that, but it won't get through complicated ones. It'll be sitting for days if it's more than three simple characters, you know. Okay, so once you've run all of that, uh, let's go ahead and in Home Student, create a directory called Hashcat, and then CD into Hashcat. And we're gonna go to our Windows machine. You wanna make sure under Input, no, under Devices, Shared Clipboard, we have Bidirectional checked in, Unit, in Linux. We wanna make sure we have that same setting over here under Devices, shared clipboard bidirectional on Windows. So we've got a shared clipboard between our two machines. We're gonna um, copy that hash that we pulled from um, Mimicats here, and it is this one, okay? So once we've got that copied on Windows, jump back over to um, your Hashcat folder on Linux, create a folder file called hash.txt, and then just paste the hash in there on a single line. So now we've extracted an NTLM hash from a Windows machine of a user with what should be an unknown password. And we'll save that and we'll close it. Now, here's the command we're going to use. Don't hit enter yet, because I want to talk about this command and what Hashcat does and how it works. Kind of the point. If we run Hashcat, pass it hyphen hyphen force, because that's required, because we don't have direct access to the GPU. We're going to tell it to use a CPU anyway. We have a parameter here that's hyphen M1000. So there's a chart we can look at for that. Let me bring that up. And here's a chart from Hashcat.net, the wiki. And the M is the, the mode. What are we going to try to get? And in this case, number 1000 on this chart is NTLM because we have an NTLM hash. So that's what we're telling Hashcat to go after. But um, there are zero. If it's just an MD5, the M would be zero. If it's a SHA-2-256, 1400. So depending on what type of hash you have, what you put after hyphen M is going to be on a chart somewhere like this. And of course, there are lots of different programs that generate passwords in different ways. So depending on where you got the password from or where, whatever it's from, you would use this hyphen M number to determine what type of, what created this hash. And M1000 in this case is MTLM, NTLM. Now we also have hyphen A3, and this is the attack mode. So let's take a look at the different attack modes that Hashcat has. And here are the um, attack modes. There's combination, straight, brute force, which is what we're, what we're doing. We're gonna create a brute force. There's a hybrid word list plus mask, and we'll talk about what a, how to use a word list, and we're about to see a mask. So it depends on what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna do a straight brute force. Now I've, we know that it's all letters. 
which makes it a little easier. So we're going to tell Hashcat to try all combinations of three letters here. And so here we go, M1000. So we're dealing with an NTLM hash. The attack type is three. This is a straight brute force. And now we've got our hash.txt file, which contains that hash. You can see it transparent down there, just one hash in there. And then I've got this question mark L, question mark L, question mark L. Now this represents three lowercase characters. All right, so if we look at the um, character sets that are supported by Hashcat in a brute force scenario, here they are. So uh, uh, question mark L, it will do everything A through Z. So that would be what I have uh, in on the Linux machine is question mark L, question mark L. Well, that would do two letters, A through Z. You could do question mark U, that would include uppercase. D, digits. Um, H is hexadecimal, right? Capital H, capital hexadecimal. Special characters. That would be a question mark S. All right. So in this case, we are telling it to try all possibilities of three letters. And it gets more complex. You can tell it to mix it up and try it. I could do, I think if I pass it a hyphen I, that would be the increment. And I could do like five of these. Let's say question mark. L, question mark L, and it would start with all one letter combinations, and then it would do all two letter combinations, and then all three letter combinations. So that hyphen I is an increment, start with one, and then work to however many you have here. But we're going to leave it at all three letter combinations, and the reason why, this is the mask, by the way. Uh, this mask works uh, without a word list or anything, because we've told it we have an attack type of three. We are using a brute force, and we are simply giving it a mask of lowercase letters. Go ahead, hit enter. And uh, it's complaining at me, even though it just worked a second ago. So hold on just one second. Yours should be running at this point. Um, I had a .pot file. I had done this once already, so it had found the password and had it stored in a cache somewhere. I had to delete that. And after letting it run for a few minutes, it'll say that this hash was indeed cracked. And we can find right here that this hash equals ABC. So if you can show me that Hashcat cracked your hash, that right there is credit, but don't hang up on me yet because I have one last challenge. So here's the challenge. I want you to download a word list called rockyou.txt, and you'll find it right here on GitHub. This is a word list that's commonly used. Um, and you can use the word list, and you can take every word on that list. Let's open it up real quick here. All right, so here are all of our words that we have. We have the word, um, and it looks like I don't have any word breaks. Obviously we have QWERTY and we have, these are probably separated. That's interesting that this isn't separated by line. Let me see if I can find a different word list because I'm not convinced that one's going to work. Hold on. Yeah, so go ahead and download rockyou.txt and if we open it in Notepad it doesn't interpret the line breaks, but if we open it in WordPad we can see that we indeed do have different uh, different um, words here, okay? Now, this would be a straight, this is a good security plus contra concept. The, we could execute an attack using this file that would be a straight dictionary attack. In other words, we are going to try every one of these words against an NTLM hash. Or we could execute what's called a hybrid attack which is where we tell it to use every word in this file, but we want to use every combination of three numbers after it. So for example, we would try monkey123, um, monkey124, monkey125, monkey126, so on and so forth. So that would be a hybrid attack. So let's... Um, 
Let's do it like this. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to create a user on your Windows system. I don't care what it is. Go ahead and extract the NTLM hash for the user's password, but I want you to use one of the words on here plus the number 123 for the password. So create a user like user2, call it Daniel123 for the password. Once you have user2 with one of the words that is on the rock you word list, and in fact you probably don't even need the whole word list, if you want to create a word list that just has two words on it, let's do that instead of using a monster word list. So in our hashcat directory here, I'll pico a file called word list, and I'll just add the word Daniel. So now I've, I don't need the whole word list, right? We can just use one because we know we want to make this short. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to have a file on Linux called word list. The file is going to contain one word. You're going to create a password on Windows for a new user. That password is going to be Daniel123. I want you to extract the NTLM hash for the new user that has a password of Daniel123. And I want you to initiate a Hashcat hybrid attack so that using this word Daniel, it tries all possible number combinations along with it and it shows you that the NTLM hash was cracked. Good luck. Ask questions if you need to.